Hi there, and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about the new navigation block that's been added to WordPress 5.9. This video is probably not going to touch mostly on the user facing aspects of the block, and it's more going to go into how the data of the block is saved and how we've decoupled the items and the data from the presentation and why that's helpful for theme developers. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get into it and we're going to add a navigation block. And we will add a couple of items to that block. These ones I prepared earlier. So we've got front page and we've got another one called admin created. And we see up here in the multi saving entity flow that we've got navigation menu and we've got a new item, new navigation item to be saved. And that gives us a clue as to how the data for the navigation block is actually saved. Let's click save and dismiss that and go to code view and we see that the items are not actually represented in the block grammar markup here. Instead, what we have is an attribute called ref or reference, which points to an ID. So what is this ID? Well, it's a reference to a new post type that's been added in WordPress 5.9 called WP underscore navigation. And what that is there for is to save the items or the data of your navigation menu um, so that you can reuse it. And we can actually see that post type um, if we go to select menu and manage menus. And we'll switch over and we can see this is the post listing screen for the new post type. And uh, we can see that the new item here has been created. But additionally, we can verify that it's saving to a post by looking at the database. So if we open the post table and hit refresh, we can see now there's a new post item of type WP navigation that's been added. The ID is 370. And if we look at the post content of that, we will see that contains the items which we just added to our navigation block, i.e. the front page and admin created. Front page, admin created. So what we have now is the navigation block saving its data to a post type. So why is that actually helpful? Well, what it is is that we've decoupled the data of the navigation block from its presentation. And that's helpful because it means we can reuse the same navigation data in multiple places on the same post, on the same site, or even between themes. And that's where things get a bit interesting. So let's try a theme switch. Let's go to appearance themes. I'm on 2022. I'm going to try switching to block base. Looks like it's out of date, but it probably worked for the purposes of demo. Switch to block base and then we'll go to, let's go to the site editor. And we open the site editor and the navigation here will probably tell us we don't have a menu. Oh, it doesn't. It says, right. So it's asking us now to choose a menu to use in this location. And what I can do is select the menu that I created in 2022 to be used in 2021. So let's click that. And sure enough, the two items are pulled through here. So that's really, really useful on theme switch. But what's really, really cool is that each theme can style the navigation block as they want. And those stylistic attributes are only applied to that specific nav block instance. And they, they're not applied to the data at all, which means theme A could have a completely different styling from theme B, but when the user switches themes, they can just pick the data they want to use for that nav block style. And we can show you that it's probably easier in a post because you can't see code view in the site editor. So let's go back to posts. Let's go to our first post. And let's add some presentational attributes to this navigation. So let's say justify to the right, we'll make it vertical orientation and we'll give it some horrible background colors. Don't do this. And then if we inspect the code view, we will see all the presentational attributes have been added to this specific block instance, but none of the presentational attributes will be added to the underlying post type. And we can check that again by going to the database, refreshing, look at the post content and nothing has changed. It's exactly the same as was. And we can see it again if we add a new navigation block just below this one and I select the same menu data 
I can have completely different presentations of that same data. For example, let's set this one to be a different background color, black, with white text or yellow text and a larger font size. There we go. So you can quickly see, uh, you could reuse, for example, a menu that you created in your header. You could have it in one des design, perhaps with right aligned, with no background, but then in the footer, in the, in, you might want a vertical menu with a black background and white text. And you can use the same data and have that presented in completely different ways. And that makes the na navigation post very, very flexible. Um, in the future, this will no doubt be enhanced so that you can go to this navigation menus post type screen here and you'll be able to click edit and you'll be able to edit the items themselves of each navigation. At the moment, you can't do that. We haven't managed to deliver that for 5.9, but in a future version of WordPress, we anticipate probably the isolated template editor view, which is what you use when you're editing a uh, template part. We can reuse that for navigation to allow you to edit just the items data of the navigation. All very powerful stuff. Uh, I hope that was helpful and a good overview of how the navigation block saves its data. There is more detail about this in the dev note for the navigation block, which is published uh, with WordPress 5.9 release. But if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. All right.